Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Thousand Week Reich mod for Hearts of Iron Forum, your host, Mr. Siberian Soviet Government Lover, and which we're playing as Zukov for now. Um, but right now we've gone to war with the good old government in Perm, well maybe not the good old government, but the government in Perm, which is not great. Uh, in the meantime, you guys are all going to die here, so you're going to force a fence so you can just kind of hang out. Uh... And literally just be a distraction. That's literally all they're here to do. We've got some quite a few comments to go through as well, because many of you responded to my thumbnail, which is very, very nice. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to continue doing what we're doing, and hopefully trying to beat the crap out of our enemies here. Because if we're not beating the crap out of our enemies, we're doing it wrong. Oh, hello. What you should have done is go there and go there to cut them off. So, I uh, hope you guys are having a pretty good day uh, yourselves. Uh, we are at war. Is there anything we can do here that's special? No. Could we go to total mobilization and get that extra women in the workforce? Um, well, we can try it. We're gonna put a power. Total mobilization it is. Okay, never mind. We couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of sucks. It's gonna be manpower. We kind of need that. Ah, oh, some, some guys been winning. But yeah, that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing for this part of the campaign. Uh, just kind of going in and see if we can beat them up. We lost all three divisions already. The Kazuma Goods, though. Not really helping up that much. Which does kind of suck, so. Uh, I know we're going to be sti sti uh, sticking here. Uh, be sitting here for a while because this war is going to, what we call, suck. Um, it's not going to be great. We'll do the best we can. But, uh, yeah, overall, I think we'll just, we're going to struggle. I mean, that's pretty much all we're going to do. Oh, uh, we have 25 divisions versus their up to 42. They've taken more losses than us, which is pretty nice for us so far. Uh, but, yeah, y you don't want to go do that. You want to hang out for now. Get some more planning done. As we talk about getting more divisions on the field, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Oh. That's not ideal. Well, that's ideal. Well, all right. It's up to them. I mean, we lose this tile. We get two tiles in exchange. It's not bad. Uh, this tile's going to... Well, could you guys actually do anything there? Maybe yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty decent. Um, they really want to win there. All right. I mean, you can if you want. I was slowly trying to close in on them, so... Um, that's quite a few divisions. I don't know if we can really attack there yet. Eh, give him some time. Give him some time. I just... Yeah, that's not good either. I was hoping we could get women in the workforce, but I guess you know what? I guess not. It's only 150 political power. We're starting to remobilize a little bit more, maybe. Um, alright, well. We're back. They are attacking us a little bit. And attacking here would be nice, but it would be better to attack right here. Can we do this and take this tile first and then destroy them like this? Yes. Now they can move in here if they were smart. What does it say? AI, so. Pretty good. Very nice job. Alrighty. Yeah, they want to do that. Yeah, okay. Ak Akmolinsk. Because that there is a supply point, which would be super good for us. Very nice. Very, very nice. Go on. See what you can do. They don't have very much stuff, which is actually really good for us. Uh, but I don't know how good Perm is. You know, the Perm government. Also, they are led by this guy. I gotta play these guys again. Soviet isolationism. Staunch Stalinist. What's not to love, my friends? What is not to love from him? Oh, she taking this tile too would be great in terms of defensibility. I guess we're too. But some comments included, such as Can you play as Portugal in this mod? Um, let's take a look see. Portugal, led by Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. You know what? I guess they do. They do have a unique focus street. So you know what? Maybe I will sometime. Keep reminding me about playing Portugal, and I will. I promise. That's a promise I know I'm going to keep. Because Portugal is, well, Portuguese, usually. It'll be interesting to see if we actually play them. Um, supply looks like it's really garbage up there, so... I don't want to attack, but I kind of want to do a general attack across the entire front. Can we do that, maybe? Yeah? Yeah, we could. Very nice. Um, another comment is, uh, oh, hello. Uh, how how do you, can you play the Thousand Week Right? It crashes for me in September 1956, all the time. Uh, I, uh, I hope that's not gonna jinx us. I've not tried Thousand Week Right in quite a while. I do know that between this episode and the last episode, I actually had to replay the entire game because there was an update for the mod. So that's why I was kind of like, oh, well, I guess I have to redo this. But the Thousand Week Right, this mod moves so incredibly fast. This is probably one of the fastest mods literally for Hearts of Iron 4 right now. So I'm like, okay. I had no problem just replaying for like an hour off screen, max, maybe. Um, but yeah. So far, doing really well. Use more guns and whatnot. Are we lacking guns? Oh, we're lacking. Oh, shnikes. Alright, do that then. 
Save a little bit. Why not? Um, we don't have no divisions for the line, but I don't think it was so worth that. Person account was keep Zukov, um, which I would like to, but I have played Zukov before. Um, someone else says Kostichin deserves to be represented too, and I heavily, heavily agree. Kostichin does deserve to be represented, which is up here actually. So continue the party. Alexi Kostichin, if you like your about him, please go right ahead. He gives us more stability, but we lose a little bit of political power. But we do have a cup of a nice peppermint tea here to keep us nice and warm, which in these trying times we can definitely use. Ah, I love having a lots of tea in my life. Uh, Mr. Tea Lover, that's another nickname of mine. Oh, well, I guess you're gonna go there then. See what you can do. Nice job. Good job, guys. Good job. Some bit of oil experiments. It is 1956. Get some more military factory construction speed, even though we're not gonna really use it too much. We just made another civvy. Okay, 70%. Throw that military uh, factory right there. That'll be nice. What is going on here? Can you do that? Can you just go here to here? That'd be pretty decent. Um, how much further do we have to go? So they've lost a lot, quite a few guys. That's actually really nice. Not bad. Um, of course, the circumference would be nice, but you know. So it says, can you do Takagi Japan in TNO? I think I've done that at least once, maybe even twice now, at the time of this recording. So I will eventually, but like, I'm kind of maybe waiting, perhaps. I don't know. We'll see. It'll cut them off. Please. So nice. Those tanks are almost dead. Quite literally, almost dead. Uh, but we're doing okay though. The north is going to suck, but you know what else is new? Another comment uh, says, um, "So we finally followed my request, which is basically yeah, I basically took his request to play this nation uh, and the Thousand Reich, which I'm glad I did." Oh, you snacky, snacky person! Oh God, supplies so bad down here. You get down there and do that. You might as well you get a victory, victory points and whatnot. Actually. I didn't even realize that Moscow they don't, they don't even own not Moscow. So you get a perm. It might just end the entire thing. But, uh, someone says, Could you try one of the Krasnoyark splinter states, like the emergency government or PDR command Siberia? Both democratic, but they're unique in Thousand Reich. Nobody's ever played them yet. Someone says, I've tried it. It's very hard and it can get boring to the end. Well, if it gets boring to the end, I just, I'll just do, use cons commands. Because at this point in my, th my Thousand Reich, my Hoi 4 career, I'm just like, whatever. If, it isn't, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. Or if it gets too boring, I'll be like, oh, well, cons commands. I'd, I'd rather not waste time. So. That's my thing. I hate wasting time. Wasting time is just like, just got awful to me. Uh, you guys could go in. I know it, you have like no supplies, but neither do the enemies. Good. Oh, we lost attack and defense now. Well, that's not good. Yeah, finishing this area up and off would be for the best. Bros. They are literally starving there. They're literally losing divisions. You still can't do it. So, so it says, I hope one day I, me, Mr. Mocha Lover, will play Spain in the Thousand Reich. It's funny that no one ever plays Spain, because Spain, as someone else says, is a lot of pain. Oh, we get more manpower here! That also been so nice. Infrastructure repair speed. Or no, just infrastructure construction speed. I'll get that manpower. Better reinforce rate, minimum training level goes down. Not bad, not bad. Um, then you can simply force grab some of that. Oh my good lord, come on. Thank you. Come on, hurry up. The rest of the front needs you, honestly. And you got him, nice. Go in. Get some more max planning done. Supplies should be a lot better now. Well, yeah, now that we got this, once we get supply through here, we'll get supply through here, which will go all the way up to here, so. We will get some supply through here. Good. Oh, there feel good. Oh, yeah, look at that. I love it when it flips blue. Give us about five more seconds. Five, four, three, two. We can try it. Yeah, we need to. We can get this guy down, too. There you go. Get Ufta. Uh, someone says, uh, honestly, keep Zukov in power. It's more deserved ending when he finally reunifies the Soviet Union. But, like I said before, I did do it in the past. But, if you really want me to play more Thousand Week Reich, because I've not, I've neglected this mod. Compared to TNO, I've really neglected this mod. But if you really want me to play more Thousand Week Reich, please let me know in the comments below. I'm I'm, I'm actually, at this point in my, my pro career, just really open to playing, like, whatever nations you guys really recommend that it's possible. And if it's not possible, then I'll just, like, sconce commands. But, nice flag! I love Joseph's Gerbils. I wish Gerbils was more and more more mods and whatnot. But, you know, it is kind of what it is. But looks like we'll take out the perm government soon. And reform the Union's government. Now that we're control of Perm, we must make efforts to officialize our status as true heirs of the title of the Soviet Union. We must declare a new Soviet government, begin to reach out to the rest of the world in hopes that we will, they will recognize our government as legitimate. Furthermore, now that we've taken another communist out of the picture, we must look towards the Pacific Coast under foreign occupation, not with one shred of legitimacy. And now, everyone, we're taking a quick look. Occupied territory is going to be really bad for us by the Shadow Secretary because the uh, Constitution has more influence than Zukov himself. Go figure. One cannot deny that Alexei Nikolaevich is a man with enormous power, perhaps outsized beyond his already prominent position, unlike many with power, though. 
Alexei Nikolaevich has shown that he seeks to use his power for the betterment of the people, rather than on furthering his own vanity. He is the right man at the right time, of course, one who is wise beyond his years, and is thinking far ahead. He and the Marshal shall see a leader nation of victory in war and peace. Yes. Oh my god, we need some more guns and anti-tank stuff. And we need some tanks, too. 15 million battle tanks? Do I throw that on there yet? Oh, I did it. Okay, my bad. I can't even see it where I'm sitting right now. Uh, but okay, not bad. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Oh, hey. Oh, dex has minus zero. Now, is minus zero, like, good or bad? I don't want to trust that. Convoy reliability, sub detection goes down, carrier size. You know what? We're not going to use cap ships. Let's try it. Um, Battlefleet designer, capital ship, uh, carriers, max speed, capital ship. What's the difference between these two? Service visibility, max speed. Relocated ship, you're number 10. Rating, ah, eh, seems a little bit more different. The political bureau convenes. With the western lands in our control and political and industrial disputes sorted out, we must not convene a meeting of pol political bureau. Much has changed since our humble beginnings across Noersk. We've gone from a small group considered secondary to the big dogs to being closer to unification than any other. But the fight's not over yet. The imperialist puppet republic of fascists and petty bourgeois still remain in control of our Pacific coast. Our divisions remain apparent. We must work to resolve these issues as we inaugurate a new political bureau. Absolutely. Uh, we got all that stuff done, which is beautiful. Come over here, and that's done. Radar is always nice. Not really needed, though, but whatever. Um, all the we can kind of wait. Better planes. Yes, please. Takes our biochemical research. What else are we going to do with political power? Yeah, you guys are looking so bad. Just combine. What even is this tank division over here? Actually, let's see. Garrison divisions. Oh, these guys are not bad. Six, and then... What's that? Yeah, they're all... Uh, what are we even using right now? So this... Uses less manpower per cost, and the same production cost. I don't see why we don't use that. I'm not going to use this, probably. Infantry template three. That's not bad, actually. We're 17 and then two things here. Yeah, actually, we could probably convert to this division then. I hate militia. I just hate them. Oh, what's that? SP light artillery. Wow. Well, probably not going to use that one then. All but you? No, convert. Well. There you go. Oh, and Kostagin's hour. Alexei Nikolaevich possesses an influence almost Rasputinian in nature. Despite his admittedly already quite powerful position as Secretary of the Party, his measure of come the odds will make his many opponents, and now establishing himself as de facto leader of the nation over Pimria and Marshal Zukov. The old door slams shut as the new one wide opens. New ones open wide. Long live the Marshal and long live the Secretary. Look at this guy. Zukov. He's still technically a leader here, but... I'm still going to keep him on, on the uh, thumbnail. Saving a malformed nation or state. Stalin investigations. They have political power. A little more population. I like that. Ivan Sarov will be purged. Oh. MVD. Russian Republic. Kosigenomics. Interesting. Porch Western investors. Ahem. <coughs> I'm not really sure. Weekly stability plus 1%. Oh, God. Introducing technology into planning? I'm not really sure. Oh, God. Premier name only. Practice army. Military commanders are aligned to Zukov will be purged. Halving conscription. Well, I kind of want to get rid of the enemies first. So it's clear that the Marshal Zukov, despite his military prowess, is ultimately not fit to be in charge of a nation. Military matter? Of course, there's no doubt he's a skillful military leader, but he possesses little to no grasp on politics, something which would be dangerous as we per, uh, try to perform or form a proper state. He's just a premier, for the love of God. But getting a, the riotous army. The military is no doubt quite uneasy about Marshal Zukov being uh, maneuvered by Secretary Kostachim, then of course. This is a matter of great concern. We wish to survive as a government. We should make some overtures towards the armies and work with them in our efforts to unify the nation and deter anyone who would honestly us ousted from power. We get choices here. I love having choices, but up here, mirror name only. Is 
Now I'm trying to finish up this tea here. This is spiced, not spiced, but peppermint tea is very nice. The Secretary's Hour. Oh my god. After much hard work, on first Secretary Alexei Kostichin's part, his influence is now eclipsed out of uh, Premier Zukov. Through careful maneuvering through his words, political influence, and having the right men in the right places, the center of power within the Soviet Union once more rests within that of the first secretary. It's not to say that the entire government revolves around Kostigin in the same way that Stalin had, but rather that Kostigin has the most agency and voice within the government compared to others. If tragedy strikes and the first secretary cannot execute his authority, the state and party institutions will be strong enough to survive such a departure. Additionally, it's not to say Marshal Zhukov is entirely silent within the government, as he still maintains a key presence in the, as a premier and in military affairs. Although, of course. Such influence is far from the total control you exercised only a few years ago. The Marshal still holds immediate recognition among her citizens as the leader of the Soviet Union, although this seems not to be under threat from Kosygin, who seems content to simply hold power behind the scenes for the well-being of the state rather than create a major public persona. The First Secretary's dreams are realized. Cool. And what over here? Can we actually... Okay, so we can restore... Oh! To the Russian Republic. Oh, he's good at war them now. Uh, oh, yeah. The Don Free State. Well... Well, in the meantime, you know what? Why not? I literally don't see why not. Anything else here? Return capital to Moscow. Weapons development. I think probably goes out of this one. Just order to all these different areas. Oh, that'd be so good to do. But we're going to play the army next. But we're going to have to maintain making the marshal's role symbolic. Unfortunately, Marshal Zukov, all master of the battlefield, possesses little no understanding of the battlefield. That is politics. If it goes on making policy in the name of socialism in the view of the country of unobstructed, there is no telling the danger could cause within a single shot even being fired. It must restrict his role politically, but we'll leave him with, of course, some form of mili symbolic military power. Do we actually have enough? No, oh, we don't have enough equipment. We got enough guns. We got artillery. Way more artillery. Way, 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 way. We need a lot here. So if that's the case. Uh, we want to go to war with the Don Free State. 15 days. That's actually really nice. I well, we can get cores on them. So we got cores here. We do. Just a premiere. The Soviet government in Krasnodar's has for the duration of its existence uh, in the personal fiefdom of Marshal Zhukov following his and several other persecuted military officers and reformist party members. Flight from the Perm and the Vosobiersk respectively. Under this version of the Soviet system, the Marshal served as the government's premier while Alex Kostichin served as the first secretary of the party to retain civilian representation against a military establishment within the Council of People's Commissariats. Although it was intended for the marshal to remain the dominant authority within the system, it appears that Kostichin was able to assert himself through his legal and oratory authority to gain a significant position of power within the government, laying the groundwork for what many consider to be a greater liberal revisionist reform to the nation. Despite the rise of power, Kostichin still finds himself subordinated to Premier Zukov regarding the final implementation of his ideas. But this should not be misconstrued for the absolute power he held in the initial establishment of our state. Should Zukov hypothetically oppose one of Kostichin's reforms, he can't simply shut down the debate over the issue as he was previously was the case. Instead, he would have to actively work against Kostichin for the party's support within the Supreme Soviet, lest he cause a political crisis using more heavy-handed tactics, something he wishes to avoid in these trying times. Even then, the working relationship with them is still described as largely positive, with Kostichin now having a not-so-insignificant not so insignificant role in the nation's policy. Kostichin rises within the falls of power. Oh god. That doesn't seem like it's very good. Uh, so do that one. Field Marshal simplifying everything. That's actually really nice. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, I do want to do eventually, though, once we get through with these ones. <clears throat> the Secretary's Illuminous Vision. Uh, Secretary Alexei Nikolaevich is a very wise man, one whose economic theories have proven to work in the context of our situation, both current and future. His beliefs of centralized economics over central planning and introducing capital's incentives into the system will, of course, pay off. Are you, are you, winning, here? Are you winning, son? <clears throat> now we need more political power, god dang it. Point eight one. Nah, no, Scotland Republic maybe next. Oh, oh, you're actually. I thought you were a part of the Reich's Pact, which I don't know why I call it the Reich's Pact. It's not the Reich's Pact. It's the new old Nung in this mod. So should do fine. Splat's gonna kind of suck, but whatever. Ah, uh, yes. Here you go. Army riots. In the response to the rising influence of First Secretary Alexei Kostichin, several notable Red Army officers have anonymously signed, anonymously signed an open letter criticizing the shift of power. Specifically, they voiced concerns regarding the capabilities of a civilian administration to manage a crisis that engulfs the country, recommending that Premier Zhukov remain or retain supreme authority over the country until it finds itself in a more stable position. The validity of these statements has been privately called into question by members of the Politburo, as well as the seemingly genuine nature of the letter, with many suspecting it as a thinly veiled attempt at maintaining the status quo of the military establishment. Although this would be grounds for an investigation into these officers' identities to take disciplinary measures, it's unlikely that such an investigation would ever be able to take place given the lack of proper civilian oversight within the Red Army. Not to mention the risk of incurring the wrath of ourselves for the time being, though. 
It appears that these anonymous officers will have to go unpunished, and we will have to be more careful in uh, curtailing Premier Zuko's power to avoid being sidelined ourselves. Quite concerning, but of course we'll do this one next after that one too. Brosifs, it's time to end them. Go in, have fun. I don't think we need ten divisions to go there. Our stuff is and shall be ours. It shall be, because it has to be. Beautiful. Hey, got some Yunkers too, huh? Nice. Um, I kind of want to do Kuban People's Republic next, but honestly, probably not worth it. So, Cassian Republic. That's really where we're at. 65, eh? Well, we'll get there. And that's actually much better for supply as well. <coughs> a couple days left. And there we will go. Beautiful. Do we actually get these as cores or not? We do not get them as cores. That sucks. But at least we get the resources somewhat from them. We're just lacking a crap ton of stuff. What are we missing? Oh, medium tanks and APCs, huh? There we go. Medium tanks? I don't want to use medium tanks, to be honest. Well. Not bad. Adapting uh, to the Union's base. Our industrial base is small, but non-existent. We fortunately have something of an industrial base north in our north and far eastern regions left behind by the mining communities and the Americans. We'll build on these as well as the industry left behind from the before the destruction of our nation at the hands of the fascist enemy and building a new Soviet industrial base. Just call it. Just call it. You want to keep building? Keep building. 50% uh, is not bad. Let's go two at a time. One civvies, one millies. Because my god, we need more millies. So when can we integrate everybody here? Oh, here we go. And we get the caucuses. We need 150 political power. Jesus Christ, that's so much. Like, bro. Grozny. Ah. Have I ever played this at? I might have. I might not have. I don't remember the time I was recording. Cause of genomics. And a speech to the party, though no doubt go in history, Alexei Kostin has set out his broad economic reform program for the reconstruction of the Soviet economy, emphasizing decentralization of the planned economy. Kostin's program sets out to delegate economic management to smaller and more local groups. These plans set from the center uh, will be up to the greater levels of interpretation by local governments, with local party leaders given more leeway to reach economic goals in a way that works for the local area. Similarly, the running of a workplace will be decentralized, with less power given to single managers and an emphasis of rule by census among all workers. As Kostin emphasized, the workplace democracy is a bedrock of socialism, and decision-making in workplaces must be based on the consensus of workers. The other key aspect of cost genomics is an emphasis on technology. Technological advance has been the greatest driver of increasing productivity in history. The cost has determined that the USSR must catch up with the West technologically in order to catch up economically. Research and development will be bolstered and industries incentivized to upgrade the capital goods. While not a complete departure from the economic planning of the 30s, the proposed package of economic reform promised to bring a significant change to the Soviet economy, where the desired effects will remain to be seen to a better future and saving a malformed state. Our current union is not a country which can exist permanently. Undermined by Russian chauvinist forces, it will undoubtedly collapse if there is to be a significant conflict between the two forces of the party, not to mention forces which are hostile to communism, must reshape the union along true Marxist-Leninist uh, principles of egalitarianism and the existence of a singular pan-ethnic Soviet people. Ah, good. Good, we got them all. Beautiful, my friends. Come on, People's Republic, eh? Yeah, they're next. I really want to integrate them. Migs? Nice. Oh, hello. More here, huh? Nice. Very good. Anything else? No. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Actually, yeah, maybe. Um, honestly, get that infrastructure construction speed because we're already building up infrastructure as is right now, so. Yeah, might as well. No, I really, as much as I want to go to war, I just want to core more stuff first. Because it gives way more factories, resources, and stuff like that to use. <coughs> so unfortunately, we've got to take a slight break from killing everybody. And do this instead. Um, maintaining some vestige of control. The people are not afraid. I kind of want to get over here to get more political power, so liberalizing the party. The current party has straight power from the vision of Lenin. Democratic centralism, ruled by consensus, party democracy, all call it as you all like, has stolen and swept it away. Who shall reclaim what is lost and bring back what others have was lost to the sands of time? We'll say no bourgeois democracy. I will say no to it. But that does not mean we will refuse true democracy, the democracy of the worker and the party. Liberalize the party, of course. 
uh, a little bit the Komsol Mall. The Komsol Mall, the organization of the youth, is full of many bright minds, will be deciding the fate of our glorious nation before we know it. So we must get them on the job training. This way, they'll become much more knowledgeable about their nation and the world, preparing them for the burdens of leading a large and powerful nation, of course. Okay, the gospel, eh? Well, it's next. The Union Union's Unbroken Body. For nearly a decade now, the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics has been a broken war to our nation. As various usurpers and statelets cropped up across the country in the face of the German invasion of our nation's core territories, meanwhile, the central government was forced out to a distant frontier in central Siberia, left to die on the numerous ethnic separatists competing for the share of the corpse. But this death was not to come, for the nation under the stewardship of the esteemed Marshal. Gregory Zukov has managed to secure its hold over the territory around the city of Krasnoyarsk, and has rebuilt the state and military institutions to ensure the Union's safety and security now. After years of hard work in the preparation, we stand ready to unify our nation under the hammer and sickle, as well as take revenge over the German invaders who nearly destroyed our country in the German Soviet War. Once again, we the world of Russia's status as a great power and an indomitable spirit in the face of adversity. Let's do it. Yeah, this is going to take, even if we do this, we're going to lose 3% of political power, and it takes 80 days to even start coring that, so that sucks. Or we just say we go to war right now. You know what? Don Kuban People's Republic. Is that the right one? We'll do it anyways. Screw it. As much as that, I mean, I, I, that's all I can say. I hate that we can't convert some of these divisions. It really sucks. These guys are all lacking so hard. Oh my god. Motorized is doing okay though. There we go. And we just go in. We literally just go in. They, they had two, literally only two anti tank rifles, huh? Thank you very much. How strong is the Moscow Red Army? Two million manpower. That would actually give us some sort of a fight to put up, huh? Good try. Uh, Return the oldest of the old. It seems that the majority of the Soviet leadership has recently come down with an incurable disease, aging, unfortunately. As no treatment is available, they must be removed and replaced with the younger, healthier people from the working class. We can allow the Central Committee to become a retirement home for the politically active. So, Goss Plan. Evolution of the Goss Plan. I kind of like that one more. Uh, introducing technology into planning. Once we be clear an emphasis on bringing Western technologies into the Soviet Union, that they must see use. After all, as English phrase goes, we must use it or lose it. Use new technology to further our output or enter another little dark age of Russian history. To this end, we should expand the usage of the technology in the five-year plans and the gospel plan as a whole. I'll do that. Yes. Uh, I don't know why I did base strike, but whatever. I was just clicking on stuff. Go and train for now. Um, some more millies. Oh, there you go. Do that. We could really use more millies. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And to get the coxes. That'd be so good to do. Oh my god. It's so bad right now. Actually, it's not bad. It, it's generally going down, but then it shoots back up just a little bit. It's going down, it's going down. Oh, that's the just shot back up. Not good. But this will give us 80 more power, which would be nice. Immoral warfare. Oh, yeah, well, one man's immorality is another man's problem. Not ours, though. Um, well, Moscow Red Army. Probably want to stop training. Emphasize intelligent reconstruction. We must rebuild our nation from the chaos of the past decade, but if we truly have any true desire to rebuild in the true sense, we're going to make things as the same as they ever were. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to completely redesign an industrial base from the ground up, in a less, uh, in a less primitive fashion. Industrial reconstruction shall be done with the power of the technology on our side, and expanding working cooperatives. Uh oh. That's not good. Workers' councils and cooperatives should form the backbone of our state after all. It's in the name. We are the Soviet Union, not the Russian Union. The reactionary politics of the Stalin era, however, have done down the supremacy of the Soviets. We, as a representative of the workers, shall restore the insurance power of the working class. Absolutely. Well, we better move fast, god dang it. We're a little bit screwed. Better the gospel am. Um, what do we got here? Oh, do we upgrade them? Oh, we have the old style of upgrading them. Well, that's interesting. 
The Gulf's plan, of course. Short for the state planning committee has since sent to him been tasked with setting out the union-wide economic plans. As the highest economic body in the USSR, it served as well, helping build our industry from the 30s in particular. But as the party moves to reform the Soviet economy in the aftermath of the Nazi era, its role will change, though there is debate as to exactly how that will happen. One proposal is to decentralize the Gulf's plan, making the central plans less de detailed and giving far more power over the specifics of economic planning to the SSR. Municipal and local governments, that is, is it is argued, would increase efficiency as local leadership would have greater knowledge of how to best implement plans in the specific local areas. Areas, other zone, while accepting the need for some level of decentralization and instead emphasize the need of modernization. Thinking that the model of central planning as it has existed so far can be made more efficient through reforming its bureaucratic structure and technological sophistication. By bringing in new, fresh thinking planners and using new communication technologies and computers, central plans are, can remain the basis of our economy, but be better suited for the modern age. The ultimate direction of the gospel will surely involve some level of both decentralization and modernization, but no part of the leadership must decide which is more, more important for emphasize decentralization, modernization. I kind of go with modernization. What can I deny that the gospel did good for the Soviet Union? Despite the famine, starvation, and all other ills which are attributed to it, Stalin's industrialization did more harm than good. The oath though ultimately it failed us uh, during the Great Patriotic War. But we cannot throw the system out over the small failures. We must revive and refine the state planning committee. Which honestly doesn't make sense to me. I think it makes more sense to me to do this one. Yeah, this one makes more sense, but I wanted to do evolution of the gospel. My bad. Oh well. Well, Schneiggy, that's not good. Um, I'm going to redo this just a little bit. So, we'll see. Expanding workers' cooperatives. Workers' councils and cooperatives should form the backbone of our state after all. It's in the name. We're the Soviet Union. I read this one earlier, so my bad. Uh, uh, I'll verify expanding industries. Our current bureaucracy simply cannot work in town with the state as massive as their own. We must greatly expand the bureaucracy to be able to work with and assist the millions and millions of people who make up the nation's population. We must begin to rebuild a government and better so that we may function as a great nation. Uh. General Secretary Joseph Stalin's uh, disappearance remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Nobody really knows about the fate of Stalin, while official explanation declares that Stalin died in battle. Certain provisions indicated that the... Oh, there they go. Uh, Communist Party has still had no idea about Stalin's whereabouts. While the fate of Stalin might be insignificant to our regime, now knowledge is power. The investigation of Stalin's fate will be a good practice for intelligence officers using their skills to answer questions for the curious world. Yeah, we should probably stop training when we're doing this, too. Uh, could I actually go in and attack them? Well, I probably could, so. I apologize for using cons commands to do, like, or I'm not even using cons commands. I didn't even use cons commands. But I was just reloading a previous save, but, you know, at this point, I don't really care too much. Eh, vast expanded the ministries. Yeah, this be very nice. Winning ourselves of a set-off. Yeah, Governor Ivan Alexandrovich, head of the security services of a great nation, is a man who's not one of us. He's cruel, barbaric, and entirely reluctant of the past days. Uh, days when they were mere warlords, and now serious competitors for the government of Russia. This man is not to be fit in. Our government, and we must remove him. But uh, Ivan Alexandrovich has massive power and will not go lightly. Thus, we shall see too that they won't present any issues following his departure. Very, very good. Oh, we're actually building a lot of stuff up, which is really nice, but still. There you go. Oh, there you go, too. Better engineers? Yes, please. More soft attack from engineer companies? Yes, please. I mean, we've been slowly expanding our divisions anyway, as these guys are 20 combat with, with plenty of RPGs and whatnot. Finish a fascist coup, huh? So we'll see about that. We can return to the capital of Moscow because we did take out the other group too, which is really nice. Um, what is this? State of Japan. Oh, order convoys. No. Uh, the old capital of Mo the Soviet Union, Moscow, has finally been liberated. Though it lies in ruin, a show of its former self. We must return to the capital of Moscow officially to show that well, once the fractured nation is no more. Sure, why not? And then we'll do some more of the stuff up here too. No, well, eventually. Oh, we want to re reintegrate the Moscow area as well. That'll be decent. Oh. Uh, there's a of set off. Good, my god, who wouldn't? Relentless assaults. That was only like fun. <coughs> uh, prepare an, an adequate alternative. Of course, with any removal, there must be a fitting replacement. We'll send Comrade Ivan Alexandrovich from this world into the next, so we must find someone who's able to fill his shoes adequately in that way. At the same time, none of them has no monstrosity or barbaric, torturous behaviors as he did. But who do we choose? That's a good question. How are we doing over here? Yeah, that's not bad. Still need no way more guns. Oh god. Better military place too would be nice. Um Quietly disappearing uh, troublesome agents. Uh, Start off agents are among us still, and no one will doubt cause trouble if we continue to permit their existence to us. It's necessary to get rid of them. No matter where they may be, we shall snuff them out and get rid of the, uh, <clears throat> them. If we happen to catch them when they're on the toilet, then we'll get rid of them then and there. 
producing more commodities, which would be bad, but approaching Western investors. If we should recover from a long lost economy, we can help to do it ourselves, now when the majority of our industrial base lies behind the AA line. We must look westwards for help to Britain and American Canada. Nations which have plenty of money and are greatly opposed to the fascist occupiers. We must look to them for reconstruction, of course. Yes, very much so. Let's take a look see. Russian Republic. Nabokov is not doing very well. They're almost out of manpower. On oh, scraping the barrel. My god, that's terrible. But whatever. But whatever. Oh, I'll get that one. Why not? Military factory construction speed. Yes. Nice. 100%. Yes. As Germany is going through a, literally a total war right now, which is not good for us, but still, whatever. Cool. We'll just build up a lot of infrastructure eventually, too. So, that's the plan. So, we can build everything. Oh, Finland announces its ambitions. New Slavs was from their neighbor Finland, which has been relatively quiet and isolated since the end of the Barbarossa invasion, or uh, Operation of Barbarossa. Um, and the invasion, of course, of the USSR back in the day. Back in a very long, long time ago. Uh, the Finns, having a deliberate way of force, announced their military and territorial ambitions for border territories and other regions that claim rightful Finnish territory. This, however, comes at a relatively expected turn of events. As Finnish armament, a border patrol increased, and overall flexing of muscles has been quite common in the last months, giving us a good idea of what the nation might be up to. We should take this as no joke, as the Finnish people have shown their strengths before, defeating the Red Army both on defense and offense. Whatever the case may be, of course, we must stay alert and be prepared. The Finns are coming in by force. Mannerheim's legacy is alive, it seems, still. Well, we will see. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. Just crap tons of infrastructure everywhere. Max it out. So our armies can move fast. Get more resources. Build more factories. Build them even faster too. So it shouldn't be that bad here, right? What's going on down here? Doing okay? Do we need any sort of airbase? Maybe? Yes, no? Maybe so? Board of convoys, of course. Western investors, although uh, the party would always be hesitant to admit it in public foreign investment and technical assistance, particularly from the great the capitalist powers like the U.S., helped significantly in our first great industrialization program under Stalin. Now, Kosovo has seen fit to once again invite the capitalists, the world's best, brightest, and churches to the USSR to invest in investment reconstruction. Enticed by the promise of huge dividends by investing in an economically going through hopefully rapid recovery, then business leaders of the capitalist world, it is hoped, will invest in the virtuous of socialism, <coughs> exporting products on low margins. Focus on exports. Oh god. Let us sell bonds with them. If we wish to compete, we'll need to be export oriented. Selling bonds in new venture capital. Some bonds. Exporting products on the margins. Well. Let us sell bonds with them. It's a simple fact that we're in dire need of money and development, as always. There's no better place to look than the coffers and pockets of the bush wall. And to all those that are in the West, or in America, Britain, there are no exception. We shall bring Western industry and business in to assist with the reconstruction, and ironically, so that we'll be able to better self survive so efficiently in building Western oriented resorts. And we should be able to become a prosperous country that we cannot rely solely on an industrial factor, the tourism business. While young, it's growing quickly, and we have little to show for when we have much of our nation's beauty has been molested by the fascist horde. We uh, must seek to build a new resort, one which will attract, uh, oh god, tourists who are used to the amenities of places like Florida and Cuba. Yeah. Oh god, they're on the move. That's not good. Southwest Army Command, that's not good for us. If we could go to war with them and contain them around here, that actually would be probably for the best. Because these guys are not going to be easy whatsoever. If we can go to war with Finland first, though, that actually might be better. Russian Republic, Army of the Freed. No Finland, eh? War bonds, we could do that, I guess. But I want to just continue, like, building up our political power storage. I and mean, that's really what I want right now. Because we're going to need to basically reunite everything. So it's going to take us some time. You know what? You just go down to the stock. RPG 7 is nice. Beautiful. 170,000 lost. Not bad. Bruh. Let's just cut them off there. <coughs> Excuse me. There you go. Beautiful. I'll get the Navy too. Is that any good? Probably not. 
Yeah, I'll do the best I can. Alright. Uh, Mountainous Republic. Could probably go to war with them. But I do want to integrate these guys too. Demand Corellia. Oh! Yeah, we can do that first? Before anything else? How many days would that t make? Let's get them over there first. Uh, the 35 divisions, crap ton of manpower. Uh, we'll see. In the meantime, we're going to start integrating the Far East. Hanging tree. Oh, look at that. Oh, you reunified the Russia. Zeus has come out from the city across the north, says so it appears that the Russian nation has been reunited. The new leader of the newly declared Soviet Union is none other than Georgi Zhukov, leader of the Red Army in the Soviet German War. Zhukov announced via radio address today that the last remnants of resistance has been obliterated. Yay! As Premier, Zhukov has supported a hawkish foreign policy, particularly in regards to what is officially termed the temporarily occupied territories of Eastern Europe. The General Secretary of the Communist Party, Sabit Orduziev, has sought to reconcile the relations between the various ethnic groups as well as strengthening the power of the SSR. The rule now holds its breath as the sea fledging Russia's first moves, hanging a tree. A Red Army Patrol mercilessly beat the people who managed to escape from Baratia. Risking their lives to escape, it was betrayed by a small clue that marked them as refugees from the Russian fascist party led by Konstantin Lozhevsky. After the arrest, the patrol received an order at the command headquarters and from Zhukov himself, who was informed after this incident, to send all the refugees to the hill where a trial of the criminal activities and general harassment could take place, which a party advocated. Led by ten Red Army soldiers, personally selected from the main command of Krasnorsk, the procession arrived on a hill in which there was no large tree, which could accommodate at least fifty adults. The ropes were ready to do their jobs, as soldiers prepared everything so that this could be completed as soon as possible, brought to a tree, beaten and mistreated. They were finally able to taste their own medicine, as which they had practiced before. Everything is finally prepared so that anyone who had any chance of surviving could now watch the roll with the noose around its neck, which tightens the trachea, trachea and prevents the flow of air from reaching the lungs, feeling everything burning inside him as if he had swallowed a flame, feeling life leave him, not by allowing him to enter the body to finally stop uh, the struggle of fate. When the hands become shaky, when the legs, legs have no life to move, and when the eyes look live, Look lost without life in you, burn and heck, fascist creatures. A time for drinking. The battle that took a lot of lives subsided. The Duma fell into the hands of the, the, hand of the Red Army, and Marshal Zukov and Kostajin emerged victorious in this war. Uh, arriving with Zukov, who accompanied him on horseback, and arriving in front of the Duma, which held on bravely before it fell into the hands of the Red Army half an hour ago, Kostajin dismounted and then told Zukov to head for the Duma, a corridor which had been cleared of the presence of Republican soldiers, who had left the city after the battle. Kostajin only glanced briefly, looking for a way to the main offices of the Republican bureaucrats. To see when he looked back, Zukov approached a machine that contained snacks and juices, and, of course, one of the drinks was Coca-Cola, which Zukov immensely adored. Always carrying money with him, Zukov had already put in enough money for two drinks. Kostajin shook his head, but supremely and reported Zukov. What are you doing, Marshal? I'm trying to finally get to that luxury, Miss Coca-Cola. I don't want to sound cheeky, but why the heck are you trying? I, I want to enjoy the victory even more, will you two? I don't want to waste my liver on that. If you already want to have something, get lemonade for me. Lemonade? Lemonade. Lemonade? Lemonade. Zukov glanced at him, not knowing why anyone would want to celebrate victory with lemonade, but Zukov still decided to give his money for such an unnecessary drink. Coke, coffee, tea, nothing surprises the mighty lemonade. This costs 50, we don't have enough 50, so. Get your butts over there now. Since we're done over there, you're gonna literally just go all the way back. That's a little bit of time, though. They are moving fast, that is not good for us. Um, we don't have any of those things really ready to go. Thanks, maybe? Produce more commodities, simplifying our logistic network. Currently, our bureaucracy is unfortunately rather Byzantine in nature, with several large ministries and offices existing for things best left in other hands. We must streamline things and bring about change to our logistical system in this way. While we'll a more efficient state and more poorly, the people will be more certain they are receiving help and basis to new towns. As we move further and further from the hyper militaristic former state, close and closer towards becoming a functioning nation. Normal nation. It's become to our attention that we have far too many military bases. But unfortunately, many of our troops have no other home. Their old villages were destroyed and beat by the fascist aggressors or enemies in our path to reunite Russia. We'll give them new homes, just that ones are more than just spaces. Life under the Union, of course. Oh god, supply's gonna be so bad, isn't it? Oh god, dang it. Well, the Soviet people have been through rough times, and is an understatement, of course. The turmoil is the Civil War, of course. And the 20s rocked the country and led to the famine and misery, and after barely half a decade of imperfect recovery, the Nazis caused the temporary collapse of the Union and the destruction on a scale that eclipsed even the Civil War. Generations have grown old knowing only a world where life in the Soviet Union has been tough to the point of hellish, as we have fought for our very survival against forces that see it, would see us exterminated. Now, last, things are beginning to change. The economy is beginning to roll back to life, of course. The political spectrum or situation domestically stabilizing, the civilian life is beginning to return. Securing food supplies and supplies and the bare basic goods have been reestablished, and the shops are beginning to be better stocked with things that consumers demand. 
We're still a long way from the promise that socialism provides, but the suffering of the, of the Soviet people is starting to wait. Living standards are rapidly becoming to rise, and the mood of recovery can be felt in the air across the nation. Under Union. Life will be good again. As it should. Good God. Hair moving fast. It's not good. Having conscription. Currently, we have not yet unified our nation fully. We have a massive conscription system in order to keep up military numbers. This method, while keeping the numbers of servicemen high, does little dearest to the people. As far as reforming ourselves into more civilian government, we will have conscription. Instead of focusing on informing military, which keeps its numbers up by endearing its servicemen, and for encouraging professionalism in schools. As necessary for us to increase. Uh, actually, yeah, before we do that, let's go to Demand Corellia. Actually, can we do both? And reintegrate Baratia. A uh, vast increased amount of professionalism in schools currently students are receiving. Oh crap. An education of subpar quality, and teachers are unprofessional. As the government previously could not afford to spend time keeping schools in place. Now that we are on the cusp of reunification, though, we will be able to create a new school system and must make one which is the envy of the rest of the world. Can we go in? Uh, 36 divisions, 5,000 men for Greater Finland. Well, if we take care of them first, close that border off, and then this is, oh my god. You're all supposed to go in radically. You're doing okay, 83,000, wow. I'm very worried when they go to war, these guys, because they're going to go to Slovenia, too. Nice. Get Finland yet? No, how do we knock out Finland yet? My god, what the heck, Finland? They're close, they're very close. There we go. That's a little better. Oh boy. Can we actually take out Ukraine at all? I don't know if we could yet or not. We got RPG 7, that's pretty nice. We got a bonus there, might as well use that, right? Well, we could try it, but still. Um, shuffling general staff. Currently, the general staff is made of people who are frankly more focused on securing their own power than the security of the people. These people who are willing, oh, look at this, uh, to go any length possible to maintain their stranglehold on power must be removed. We must sweep away the old and bring the new. Those who truly care for the nation and the people. Oh, God. Uh, we could rebuild Moscow. That'd be nice. We get 50% more stability, but, you know, if you wonder about both of these, please go ahead. I want to rather go to war with the Rex Commissariat. Oh, oh my good god, that's so much! Yeah, we're definitely not ready for them at all. Uh, that's okay, it's gonna sit here and, like, die. Uh, association with Freed. Brosis. Karabashev. Yeah, we're gonna just beeline making a crap ton of divisions. Um, because I don't want to liberate them, I want, I want to just eat these guys up. Oslin. Ukraine, Turkestan, oil. What kind of screwed? Uh, promotes, uh, produce more commodities. We can see the heavy industry alone cannot save our economy during the Great Patriotic War. For that reason, we must move towards the expansion of our light industry, clothing, toys, and so on. By manufacturing such things, we'll be able to make more and more money, which we can use on things like infrastructure, construction, and so on. Overall, just better in every way. Copy foreign designs. The new Socialist Design Bureau. I prefer this one. Wait, do you get a research slot? Why would we not choose this one? We get a research slot. Okay, good. We're going to rely on foreign technology, nor should we seek to do so. We are an intuitive nation. 
having invented such things as color TVs and the periodic table, and we can figure out how to develop the necessary technology for a nation without looking to foreign products. Our future will be made by our, ourselves and ourselves alone. This doesn't seem worth it at all, like this one. The guards and, and, and the army of our state currently operate two different organizations, but in the past they were one and the same. This split is not only necessary, but overly really bureaucratic, but undermines our position in comparison to possible treacherous voices. We must seek to undo this point of split and merge the guards back in the army. Uh, oh, look at this. Well, that's really cool. Uh, formerly renovating Marx's economics. It's necessary to note that Marx cannot predict our current circumstances. Oh. Well, of course not. Um, uh, he believed wrongly that the Russians would be among the last to embrace the socialist revolution. Rather than moving to capitalism first, Russians jumped directly from Tsar's feudalism into the light of socialism. Therefore, we cannot rely on Marx's theories alone. It was meant for France, not Russia, and we will need to make necessary adjustments to fit our circumstances in making a move. The time is gone for us to make a move. Sir Alvis Lack shall no longer exert any influence or threaten us, and the reign of terror shall come to a abrupt bloody end. We will not be harassed, bullied around by the force of internal security in undertaking the disgusting British vision. We shall ensure that there is one government, and it will be that of Nikolai Nikolaevich. So let me know, should we do maintain some vestige of control versus Shifting policies, policing to the decentral form. Please let me know which one we should do in the co in the comments below. But I think we'll end the episode here, as we have like no political power, and Zukov is looking down with new glasses on. And America's up here too. Look at that. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're gonna struggle with a new ordinance. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.